Today we're going to be turning some crappy 3D printed miniatures into something that looks somewhat decent. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here and I'm back with another dungeon building video. Today we're actually going to be painting some miniatures for our dungeon build. These are some slightly harder opponents for later in the dungeon. They're 3D printed, they got a bunch of lines. I bought them on eBay. I do like the sculpts, especially this guy right here. I don't know how good you can see it, but I don't like the lines that they had. I'm sure it's a filament printer and I know resin printers do better. Anyway, these are the miniatures I bought and I bought these off eBay. I'll try to find them again on eBay. I bought them a while ago, so I'll look for them again and try to link them down in the description so you guys can pick them up. They're pretty cheap for what you get. Um, I think there's also places you can download these if you have a 3D printer and you can print them out. So yeah, I blue tack all these miniatures down to some shot cups that I got at the dollar store. Oh yeah, and take it out my nice airbrush. Love this airbrush. Pretty cheap setup actually. So, and once you get it down, once you get airbrushing down, it's fun. It really is. When I first did it, I sucked. I'm not gonna lie. It didn't help that I was just trying to do it with like an air tank instead of a compressor. I should have never listened to people on the internet. Don't look at random forums that they have no idea what they're talking about. So yeah, I'm first just priming these with watered down black paint. I water everything down and I put flow improver, Vallejo flow improver, a few drops and everything. A Little bit of alcohol, a little bit of flow improver, at least half water and half paint. And the paint I'm using is already airbrush paint. So I just prime them all black. I have I have these little dropper bottles that I pre-mixed everything in. So this is golden white. Now that's golden fluid acrylics white. And I watered it down that same recipe like I said. Yeah, I just spray from one angle. I don't go around the whole miniature. I'm just spraying from like the front top, maybe just a little bit of a curve. That just gives it a nice zenithal. That's how everybody's saying it, zenithal highlight. That's People are using it in terrain and they're using it in miniature painting. It's just in general in this hobby become a thing. And you can get a similar effect just by dry brushing. If you want to see that, I'll link a video on the screen right now. And it's the previous video of us painting the minions. That's the rest of the like skeletons and zombies. There's a whole horde that I painted. It basically, if you're just dry brushing, you want to do like a gradient from top to bottom. Have the bottom be like black almost and the top be almost white. And you're just going to gradiate the whole, like you're going to do like the bottom third black in a little bit of dark gray. Between the third and the two third, you wanna have like a medium gray and the very top, like the head and the shoulders, you want dry brush white. And it gives a similar zenithal highlight thing. Cause I know everybody doesn't have an airbrush. I understand, but I got it. I wanna use it. It was, I think $200 for the whole setup. It's not bad, it's really not. And I got links to that in the description from Am on Amazon links. Like I, ha I have my affiliate links on Amazon set up in Canada, UK, and the US right now. So definitely check those out. We're going to paint all the flames on these miniatures, which is pure white. We're not thinning that down. Occasionally I'm going to like spray it with a spray bottle. If you're not using a wet palette, you can keep a little spray bottle and just spray your acrylic paints occasionally. It's one of those things artists have done for years. This is probably one of the longer steps in the whole build, just trying to figure out where all the flames are, especially on these crappy miniatures. I mean, the designs are really cool, but man, I hate those lines. And we're just gonna leave the skeletons gray like that. The bone, all the bone is gonna be just gray, like we just zenithal highlighted. Just leave it like that. The highlight's great the way it is, and we don't wanna mess it up. Now we're gonna be using golden teal. This is one of my favorite colors Golden has. It's a very brilliant, bright teal color. So usually we're, we're gonna work from like black up, but with this build we're doing the opposite, if that makes sense. And a lot of that has to do with the flames. Look at pictures of flames, see how they transition. Everything's a gradient. You gotta remember that when you're painting. Even terrain, paint gradients and things look better. The human eyes just attracted to gradients. So even like right now, if you look at me, look at my body, you see a gradient and you see like the lights hitting here and it just slowly gets darker and darker and darker. See that? My arm, my hand is like light and it just goes darker and darker and darker. Okay, so basically that's light hitting it obviously, but with flame it's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna be like, same if my arm was flame, down here would be bright 
and up here would be dark. So you want all the recesses, so like where the shadows would be, would be white, white. We, don't, we want them to be like a brilliant, bright flame. With these, you can see I'm just gonna paint like the very outermost regions of all the flames with the teal. Just remember to leave white in the recesses, do teal on the outermost regions. I don't know, recesses, what's the opposite of recesses? I don't know, I'm sure you know what I mean. I know what I wanna say, I don't know how to say it. So this is just setting it up for the glazes. And that's where it starts getting fun, but we'll do that in a minute. So we're still base coating. So yeah, we're setting everything up. Base coating everything, that's setting everything up for what's to come. Um, don't worry too much about details. It's basically just blocking in the colors of the basic colors of what we're gonna be doing. Now we got this blue violet, I think. I don't remember for sure if that's what it's called, but it's, it's by Vallejo. And I'm painting all the fabric. These miniatures don't have a lot of fabric. There's three that don't have any fabric whatsoever. So we're just going to leave those teal like they are right now. There's two miniatures that are kind of like wizards or liches or sorcerers or undead sorcerers, something like that. And we're just going to paint all the robes with a thin coat. I water it down. Like I said, I'm using a spray bottle on this. I just want it watered down so it gets into the recesses pretty easy. Check out this shirt. I designed it. You can pick them up on our website if you want one. It's fulfilled by Printful, so you don't have to worry about me being slow about getting it out. If it's slow, it's on them, not me. Okay, now we're going to do some metallics. And I forgot that I was going to lay down some black paint on the metallics first. I mean, I was going to lay down some black paint where I was going to paint the metallics first. Forgot about that, so I had to improvise a little after painting it. If I would have went back and done it again, I would have painted all the places that I was going to have metallic black first and then painted over it with these metallics. And the metallic, I'm using two colors of metallics, Vallejo Oily Steel and Bronze. I'm basically just, I'm not like cleaning out the brush between using both of them. I want it to kind of mix together and kind of have like an easy to do tarnished look without having to use some sort of special effects or anything like that. I basically just dip it in the bronze, paint it on, and when that starts going away, I dip it in the oily steel and paint it on. And it makes a nice little mottled look and it's kind of wet blended together. Not too specific with the metallics, I just try to make sure not to get it on the rest of the stuff because I don't have to paint over it. But if you do paint over it, feel free to just touch it up with the other color. Now we're gonna be using some Liquitex glazing medium. This makes glazing really easy and a lot of miniature artists don't use this. They just use a wet palette and a little bit of paint. That works. I think it takes a little bit longer and I also think that it's not as good a quality as paint when you do that. It has a tendency to separate the binding. The binder separates from the pigment and you are laying it on there, but sometimes when you do that, the pigment will come off when you spray varnish it later on and it won't be as vibrant and I really like I really like, oh, we're overheating. If you've been getting some value out of this channel, then consider joining us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you'll gain access to perks such as extra footage of videos like this one and other videos that I've done in the past. And I want to give a huge shout out to Charles Stoll, who recently joined the League of Alchemists and is the latest patron on my Patreon page. Thanks so much. Okay, and we're back. Let's get back to watching this video. So the glazing medium, I'm using Liquitex glazing medium. I'll try to link that in the, in the description too. So right now, we mix that glazing medium in with some white paint. Glazing with white is not always ideal. I definitely wouldn't recommend it with miniature paint. I would recommend it with artist quality paint. And I know a lot of people don't paint miniatures with that kind of paint. Even the heavy body acrylics, great for glazing. So yeah, we're, we are... Mixing the glazing medium in with this good brush. Again, like I said last video, trying to break myself of this habit. Do not mix this paint with your brush. It gets up into the ferrule and it will splay your brush hairs. Not good for your brush. Don't do that. See, there's that's better. That's better. Mixing it with the back of a brush. So anyway, we're just going to glaze this. And a glaze is just like a translucent paint. You want it to just like show the colors underneath, but also have some coverage. And it's gonna give like a smooth airbrushy blend. So we already like laid the base coat, okay? Now we're gonna do it like a gradient. So the bottom we want lighter and the top we want darker. 
So with the white, we're gonna glaze like maybe the bottom half to third of each of those teal spots that we base coated and then do a little bit more as we get lower so like say the upper parts of the flames like the, the taller parts like above around the guy's skull you want those flames to be more teal but the flames down at the bottom you want to be more white it just looks better i mean it already looks good without the glazing you could just leave it like that but we want we want some miniatures that people are going to be a little bit impressed by and I know I'm not really known for miniature painting. I like miniature painting. I think it's just as important as terrain building and it's part of the hobby to me. I was thinking when I'm painting these, it would be cool to have like, this be like radiant fire. Like they're not normal undead. So this is like a temple dungeon. This is a bunch of priests who got tainted by some sort of something. We don't know yet. We don't know. We might know in the end room. What do you think? What do you think tainted this dun these priests in this dungeon? Just try to make it like where the cooler part of the flame is, it's going to be darker, like the, the teal. And where the hotter part of the flame is, where the flame starts, you want it to be the white. And we could have done a glow on these miniatures, but I chose not to. If you want to do a glow, check out my glyphs video, my divination room video. It's similar to that. That's, I mean, it's terrain, but it still is the same concept as painting miniatures, in my opinion. If you happen to be getting some value today, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video. It not only shows me that you like the content that I'm providing, but it also shows YouTube that it's worth watching and will get it out to more crafters like you and me. What color is this? This is Phthalo Turquoise. Phthalo. Phthalo. I always call it Phthalo. I don't know how to really pronounce it. I don't even know what language that is. It's P-T-H-A-L-O Turquoise. And it's almost black when when it comes out of the bottle. like It's artist grade paint, so it's got a lot of pigment. This is pretty transparent, so it's really good for glazing. And I'm just gonna glaze some shadows onto the miniatures. I'm also gonna do a little bit on the tip of the flames, basically just shading with this color. Just painting it in the recess. You'll see, see I darkened the flames just a little bit, just on the very tips, like the tongues of the flames. And then we get some black and we're glazing, we're the same method, glazing medium, black, water. And we're going to add some shadows, some careful shadows to everything. This is really effective on the metal. Like I said, I would have done the metal with, with a black undercoat instead of the just putting it over the gray. But it worked out pretty good once I added all these black glazes to it. And on the deepest recesses, I also do that. And on the on the, all the robes, and I think there's just robes, yeah. I just accentuate all the shadows that we just painted with the turquoise. I felt like I wasn't being very careful, but now that I'm watching it, it looks like I'm being careful. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe it's just different than I imagine when I'm doing it. I get kind of into the painting. I like painting. I like painting in general, not just miniatures and not just terrain. I used to love painting fantasy art, especially when I was younger. I still like fantasy art, but I just don't get time to do it. This flaming skull dude's looking cool. If you saw the last video of painting the minions, I used this this mixture, this it's, it's texture medium. This one's a Liquitex texture medium. And it's called resin sand. And it just has like resin sand in it. There's, they have some that has sand in it too. You can just mix like paint and sand together. You don't need to glue and then sprinkle sand if you don't have to. So I just goop this stuff on all the miniatures. And I did glue rocks on these bases before I started painting them. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Just little pebbles, little aquarium gravels. Okay, now we're gonna do some dry brushing. This little brush has seen better days and it's all flayed. So I'm gonna tear off some of the, what do they call Hairs. I kind of like clip and pull. That way it like strips the hair a little bit. If you have a better brush, just use a better brush. Most of my brushes are big since I do so much terrain and I didn't want to use any of my new sable brushes to dry brush with so i found this old brush i just dry brushed the gray on there this is this is pewter gray by apple barrel this is just crappy gray it's not important and i know a lot of people are saying these days that you can't paint miniatures with with crappy with craft paint i totally disagree with that i don't care what kind of paint you have you can paint miniatures with it it might be a little bit different of a process on sometimes i don't think so with craft paint especially if you get the delta coat craft paint the what is the ceram coat that stuff's really good for painting miniatures 
You get more for your buck too. I like Golden. They're expensive. And I like Vallejo. They're a little bit expensive. Now that I have, I got hooked up with a distributor. So I don't know if anybody would be interested in getting discounted hobby supplies. But it's definitely a possibility of putting those on my website. So let me know. I might be able to even do like 20 to 25% off depending on what it is. So yeah, some of this I'm not even like dry brushing. It's more of an overbrush. Overbrush isn't dry brushing. It might look like dry brushing, but you can see that I'm put, I'm like, I have paint on my brush, okay? I'm just not putting very much paint on there and I'm like taking a little tiny bit off. Then I overbrush it and overbrushing, you're trying not to get in the cracks. So usually when you're painting something, you're gonna like try to cover everything. With overbrushing, just don't worry about getting in the cracks, that's all. Now I get the Antique White by Apple Barrel and I dry brush that. Then I just finish it off painting black on the base. This is Vallejo Black. It's a nice dark black. The other black that I like is Createx. That's an airbrush paint, but it is black black. Of course, it's not like those, what is it, those 3.0 blacks and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys have seen those. They're like so black, they soak in everything and they're just like flat black. These miniatures turned out really cool though. I was, I was happy with him. I don't know what this guy was. A sorcerer. This guy's a lich, it looks like. I'm probably not going to use him as that. I don't know. I'd like to have like a really good quality miniature at the end. This flame skull's cool. The set came with two of these dudes. Just these flaming skeletons. Anyway, I think that's it. If you're enjoying my channel, make sure you subscribe. More of this is to come. We're going to be finishing this dungeon. We're going to be wrapping it up in maybe a month or two, hopefully. I got some other builds that I'm also going to be doing. A lot of people join this channel through some of my just generic terrain builds. So I'm definitely going to go and do some more of those. I think next time we're going to be doing some basic modular hills that are easy to make. And I'll try to get another dungeon room up too. Try to get a little bit ahead on videos, then maybe I can post a couple videos one of these weeks. If there's anything you want to see, let me know.